Some people complain that English is a pain to learn, remember, and recite. Some people they fuss, they curse, moan, and cuss that they have to stay up all night. Well, people don't whine because things will be fine. I can promise you that in a flash. For there's a man about town who will help you calm down and ease all your worries in a dash. You'll find him on the net. Yes, he's easy to get. Just a few clicks away. That's all. So people, I shout it again till I'm blue. If you're learning English, here's what you must do: tap this short address and click with your mouse. Be you at a net bar or alone in your house, there's no course of action that could be finer. YouTube.com/Duncan in China. Yes, that is my address for my YouTube channel. And here we are all again today together, reunited on the World Wide Web. Good afternoon and welcome. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. So here we are again on a Sunday. First of all, can I apologize because last week I wasn't here. I had some slight problems here that I had to sort out. Also, last Sunday I was at the top of a tree with Mr. Steve cutting some of the branches off one of my conifers. So I was very busy last Sunday. I had some things that I had to sort out and also I had to help Mr. Steve with one of our big trees in the garden. So that's what I was doing last Sunday. Of course, I was with you on Monday. I did a short live stream on Monday just to explain why I wasn't here. But we are together once again live on YouTube. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Once again, sorry for last Sunday to those who were <laughs> waiting for me. I did have one or two people say, Mr. Duncan, where were you? Yeah, Mr. Duncan. We were waiting for you last Sunday, but you didn't appear on the Internet. What happened? Well, I've already explained what happened, so I, I do apologize very much for that. Welcome to a Sunday. It's very dull, damp and dismal today, which is a pity because we've had some lovely weather recently. We've had some lovely hot summer days, but today it is very <laughs> dull, damp and dismal. Look at those words. They are all pretty, pretty negative words. Very negative and dull. Something that is lifeless or dark damp, something that is soaked, it is wet, it is clammy, it is unpleasant. And of course, dismal, dismal, something that is dark or dull or unpleasant, something that's not very nice to look at. We can say it is dismal. So today, sadly, we have no sunshine. It is a dull, damp, dismal day <laughs> here in England. So I do apologize. We're not going outside today. Sadly, I won't be going out into the garden because today, unfortunately, it is raining. We've had a lot of rain here today. <laughs> so as I've already mentioned, it is dull, damp and dismal. So I, I think we're all clear on that. I have had some complaints during the week. Besides the messages asking where I was last Sunday, I've also had someone I've had someone write to me saying, Mr. Duncan, sometimes you repeat yourself, especially when you are saying hello to your viewers. You seem to repeat yourself over and over again when you are saying hello. Mr. Duncan, sometimes you are like a broken record. Now, I must say, I think that is very unfair. One of the reasons why I like to say hello to my viewers is because you have been with me 
for all of these years don't forget I've been here doing this for over 10 years on YouTube so I really like to return the fact that you have been here supporting me and it is because of you you are the reason why I come back every week to do my live streams so that is the reason why I am here I am only here because of you so I love saying hello to my to my students and also my viewers all around the world so that's the reason why I do say hello to many of my viewers and many of those who are watching today for example in the live chat so I will be saying hello to some people so I do apologize to those who think sometimes I am like a broken record but I can say now that sometimes I do repeat myself but of course don't forget we, I always have new viewers joining me all the time so for some people they might discover this live stream without knowing what it is so sometimes I have to explain what this is so those who have just joined me will know what is going on so that is the problem that is one of the things about doing something live and doing something for a long time so because I'm here for two hours I sometimes have to explain the same thing again and again it's a little bit like learning English really because when you learn English it is very good to repeat things this is one of my tips for those who are learning English never be afraid to repeat things if you are learning new words if you are trying to remember things if you are trying to get words to stay in your brain then it is good to repeat things never be afraid to repeat things that you are learning or things that you are reading especially when you are trying to remember them lots of things coming up today lots of news first of all a few days ago I had a special visitor we hosted Mr Steve's mum yes Mr Steve's mum came to stay Mr Steve's mum stayed here a few days ago and we had a lovely time do you want to see where we went we had we had some lovely day trips we went to a place called the Long Mind there it is the Long Mind in Shropshire not very far away from where I live but this is a beautiful area lots of beautiful green hills and the views from the top of these hills is absolutely stunning so there it is this is some video footage that I shot on my mobile phone so this place you can see now is called the Long Mind and there are some sheep <laughs> they look very happy and content in fact they were sitting right next to the car and there is another view of the Long Mind in a moment you will see Mr Steve and his mum walking along in the distance there in the very far distance you can just see the Reekin so that is where I live near the Reekin and there I am walking along walking along the Long Mind Long Mind means Long Mountain and there is the view and look can you see in the distance there is Mr Steve with his mother walking along the top of the Long Mind if you look just to the right you can see some houses in the distance that place is called Church Stretton Church Stretton and there it is a close-up of Church Stretton a very beautiful place very close to the Long Mind very scenic so there it there it is look at that Mr Steve's mum came to stay for a few days <laughs> looking across towards the mountains and there is the Reekin once again in the distance just towards the top left and there is Mr Steve with his mum walking along it was a beautiful day even though it was very cloudy the weather was lovely it was quite warm 
quite humid hopefully in a moment we will get to see mr steve and his mum close up <laughs> but where are you mr duncan why can't we see you well you can't see me because i'm the one doing the filming that's the reason why oh look at that some some crows are gathering above one of the hills so there another shot taken at the long mind whilst mr steve and his mum were enjoying a walk there they go off into the sunset <laughs> off into the distance sadly there is no sunset just lots of cloud So Mr. Steve's mum came to stay with us for a few days. She had a lovely time. And I must say, Mr. Steve's mum has a lot of energy. In fact, she has a lot more energy than I do. I was complaining at this moment. I was complaining because I was feeling a little tired. But Mr. Steve's mum just wanted to keep walking and walking. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that Mr. Steve's mum has more energy well, certainly more energy than I do. And there is the Reekin once again in the distance. Can you see it? Right in the distance. And that is near to where I live. Another shot a little closer. Giving you a, a sense of the landscape. So this particular place is very scenic very wild you really should come here in the winter in the winter this place is amazing it's really cold and very windy very few people come up here during the winter only the bravest of walkers will come to the long mind during the winter months <laughs> because it gets very wild here as you can imagine Aya Muhammad says boring bye bye I love saying goodbye to people there you go then well you don't have to watch it <laughs> he's gone now so there's Mr Steve and his mum I think they're waiting for a bus <laughs> it looks like they're waiting for a bus I have news for them there aren't any buses up here Hi there. <laughs> so there we go. That was our little trip to one of the local landmarks around this area, a place called the Long Mind. I'm sure later you will be looking it up on the Internet. I'm sure later you will be checking on Google to find out where the Long Mind is. Talking of Google, have you ever googled yourself have you ever gone onto google and put your own name into the search engine have you ever done that i have and i must admit i did get some very interesting results i did get some interesting results from my search when i entered my own name a little bit later on we are going to do just that i am going to put my name into google i am going to put mr duncan into google and i'm going to see what we get i'm going to do it live i have done it before but today i thought it would be interesting to put mr duncan into google and see what appears but have you ever done that have you ever put your name or maybe a name of someone you know or maybe the place in which you live have you ever put it into google as a search have you ever searched for yourself so that is one of the questions i'm asking you today have you ever googled yourself a little bit later on i will google mr duncan just to see what happens <laughs> So the live chat is up and running. We have lots of people here today. In a few moments, we're going to have a look at some video footage, some video clips from many of my lessons. Uh, of course, on my YouTube channel, there are lots of video lessons. And just in case you are wondering, 
all of my video playlists are under this video so underneath this video you can find all of my video lessons teaching you the English language all under this video you can check those later on if you wish we're going to have a look at one of my lessons that I did during October 2013 and also we are going to take a look at excerpts from my full English lessons as well so all that to come also you may have noticed behind me there are some questions on the board so first of all have you ever googled yourself another thing i thought would be interesting to talk about today if you wish to if you want to do you know any british tv programs are you aware of any british tv shows do you watch british television programs so are there any british tv shows that you know do you know any british tv shows and when we talk about tv shows we are talking about tv programs made in britain so anything really anything that's made in england or maybe something made in scotland or maybe wales or northern ireland anything made in britain or the uk do you know any british tv shows a little bit later on i will show you some British TV shows yes all of that coming later on as well we have so much stuff to do today also I have some big news for you it looks as if I am going to get new neighbors the person who lives next door to me has decided to sell their house I don't know why I don't think it's my fault I don't think that living next door to me is all that bad to be honest so I don't think it's my fault that my neighbors are moving but they are and they are selling their house so it looks as if very soon I'm going to get some new neighbors oh my gosh new neighbors coming here very soon and can you see the way I spell neighbor you will notice that there is a, a U the letter U in neighbor because of course the spelling is British English spelling so very soon I have a new neighbor but who will it be I must admit I'm feeling very nervous because of course sometimes neighbors can be very good and sometimes neighbors can be very bad and annoying so very soon I am going to get a new neighbor living next door to me but who will it be i don't know <laughs> let's have a little look at the live chat let's have a look live chat is up and running abaz is here hello abaz thanks for joining me today maria i'm saying hello to maria hello maria thanks for joining me today on my live chat it's a Sunday afternoon here in the UK. It is just coming up to 25 past two on a Sunday afternoon. Jifty, Jifty Yawi says hello from Peru. Oh, hello to Peru. I don't have many people watching in Peru, so thank you very much for joining me today. Moscow is here. This is England calling Moscow. Moscow, do you read me? <laughs> hello to olga watching in moscow a big privet to you tung lam is here hello mr duncan hello tung lam thanks for joining me today zahir is here good evening mr duncan how are you i'm okay thank you very much it's lovely being here once again did you know or do you know that today it is just over one year since I did my first ever live stream. It was just over one year ago on the 15th of July 2016 when I did my first ever live stream. Just over one year ago. In fact, it was one year ago yesterday. So I've now been doing my live streams for exactly one year. Wow. And don't forget, I've been on YouTube 
for over 10 years hello from andrew hello andrew watching on the finn mongolian border very interesting deep pan shu is here thanks a lot for joining me zahir says mr duncan are you as fit as a fiddle i am i am as fit as a fiddle but i think mr steve's mum has more energy than i do it's very embarrassing for me mr duncan i missed you uh, that it that comes from margaru margaru thank you very much for that pierre <laughs> thank you pierre pierre has said a little bird has told me that on the 12th of august it is a great day because you will never guess i will never guess i think i know the reason why august the 12th is special because it's my birthday yes my birthday is coming up in around about four weeks time oh now last year if you remember i did a live stream on my birthday but will i do a live stream this year on my birthday you will have to wait and see shira blade or shira blade is here good afternoon mr duncan here i am peter from brazil i really love your live stream thank you very much you are welcome no problem tiago hi mr duncan hello mr duncan ramon diaz from the dominican republic so many people are here today sylvia from brazil is here of course i have lots of people watching in brazil i always learn new things with you thank you very much sylvia for that wonderful landscape thank you very much one person said it was very boring but don't worry they've gone now because i i blocked them <laughs> ah, dear me. hi mr duncan from B vietnam yes lots of people watching in vietnam mr duncan what is cynic cynic a person who is a cynic is a person who always looks at the negative or the the dark side of something the negative side a cynical person always questions everything around them they are they tend to be very negative a person who has a negative view of things or they think maybe there are hidden reasons for things occurring they are often described as being a cynic cynic a person is cynical pedro is here hello mr duncan you live near a mountainous area i don't live too far from the mountains that you saw earlier i don't live very far away in fact I, I can see them from my house even though they are very far away leon louis agrees with me thank you very much leon yes mr duncan i agree repeating makes us learn faster yes i agree as well because as i mentioned earlier many people are very afraid they are scared they are very worried about repeating things again and again but i always say that one of the main parts of learning anything new is repetition never be afraid to repeat things and of course that includes my video lessons you can watch my lessons many many times the more you repeat it the more will go into your head the more you will remember so thank you leon for agreeing with me there are some people who disagree but whatever <laughs> mr duncan what is the time there you can see the clock down there that is the live clock it is now coming up to half past two now we are going to have a look at an excerpt from one of my october lessons that i did in 2013 many people have asked about my special lessons that i did way back in 2013 and i did them over the whole of october so i did 31 lessons in october and what you are about to see is the first ever 
Dunktober lesson. Dunktober, of course, is a combination of Duncan and October. And it's worth mentioning that in this video there is a very special guest. 31 days of Dunktober. Day one. Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan. Wakey, wakey. Time to wake up, Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan. <sighs> it's time to get up. Mr. Lomax, what are you doing here? This is my bedroom. Nobody's supposed to be in my bedroom. Your viewers are waiting for you at the breakfast table. Well, I suppose I had better get up then. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on where in the world you are watching. Welcome to the very first day of 31 days of Dunktober. Here I am at my breakfast table. I have my cereal ready to eat. I have my cup of tea and I have you. I'm going to start with a question. Are you a morning person? Would you say that you are lively and full of energy first thing in the morning? If I had to be honest, I would say that I'm not really a morning person. I often feel sluggish and groggy when I wake up and the feeling does not go away for at least a couple of hours. I do not usually liven up until around midday. If you are sluggish and groggy, then your mind is not clear. You cannot think straight. You can say that you are not with it. I'm sorry if I seem not with it, but I'm still half asleep. You see, I'm not really a morning person. I will see you tomorrow morning. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying, to ta for now. Do you remember that? Were you around in 2013 when I did my special October lesson? So there it was, a clip of my first ever October lesson that I did in 2013. It was a very special month way back in 2013 when I did a lesson every day. So there were actually 31 lessons that I did during October 2013. So I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, Mr. Lomax, did you see Mr. Lomax was also in the video? Many people are asking, many people always ask, who is Mr. Lomax, Mr. Duncan? Who is he? <laughs> Mr. Lomax is one of my friends that gets involved now and again. And he happens to be a monkey. <laughs> uh, Monica says, I am not a morning person, Mr. Duncan. I feel the same about getting up in the morning. I hate waking up in the morning. I hate getting out of bed in the morning because I always feel so groggy. I always feel so sleepy so tired so i don't like waking up too early there's nothing worse than having to wake up very early in the morning one of the worst things to do is if you have to catch a plane if you have to get to the airport for a very early flight now that to me is one of the worst things you have to do so you have to get up very early maybe four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning and then you have to travel to the airport because you are catching a very early plane so i hate that i i don't like waking up too early i normally wake up at around about eight o'clock in the morning so that's my my normal waking up time a lot of people joining in now i think they are watching from the beginning of course you can follow this from the beginning you can rewind this actual live stream if you are watching it now because youtube is amazing 
talking of youtube because youtube is owned by google a little bit later on i am going to google myself i'm going to put mr duncan into the google search engine and i'm going to see what happens when i search myself so have you have you ever googled yourself have you ever looked for yourself on the internet some people say that if you do that you are very narcissistic you are very self-centered and egotistical but i think it's fun i don't think there's anything wrong with looking for yourself on google nothing wrong with it so a little bit later on i am going to google myself right now i think we should have shall we have a flash word yes we will have a flash word and then after that we are going to have a look at today's mystery idioms yeah the mystery idioms are back and we will be taking a look at those very soon but right now let's have a flash word today's flash word will be done it will be given it will be read out in the living room <laughs> that's nice oh look at a change of scenery now we are going to change the scenery slightly so here i am now sitting in my living room and we have yes we have a flash word to show you can you see it i hope so i hope it is clear on your screen so today's first flash word is stalemate 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 is an english noun and verb the word stalemate is an english word that in noun form means to reach a point where there is no opportunity to continue stalemate refers to there being no possible further action or progress the negotiations between the workers and their employee ended in stalemate a situation in which further action or progress by opposing or competing parties seems impossible in the game of chess a position counting as a draw in which a player is not in check but cannot move except into check in other words the other person cannot win the other person cannot win as a verb the word stalemate means to do something that brings about the actual stalemate so stalemate can be used as both a noun and a verb to reach a point where no further action or progress is possible stalemate we will often hear about political negotiations between leaders of countries and quite often they will debate or they will talk and perhaps at some point they will reach a moment where they cannot continue because neither will agree so one party will not agree with the other one they will not come to a solution they cannot reach a solution so we can describe that situation as being stalemate i hope you enjoyed our first flash word for today and now we're going back into the studio by the way mr steve is in the garden today so you might actually see mr steve walking around behind me at some point okay let's go back it's a very busy one today a very very busy busy lesson and there here i am here i am i'm back so i have a new neighbor soon my my neighbor my current neighbor has just put their house 
on the market and I'm sure it will sell very quickly because lots of people want to live around here because it's very scenic so I might be getting a new neighbor soon but who will it be I must admit I feel a little nervous about that but not to worry I will be as kind and as friendly as I can to my new neighbor I will welcome them to the neighborhood so there is no problem there back to the live chat because we have lots of people queuing up now on the live chat let's have a look <laughs> fate fate says hello everybody practice makes perfect if someone wants to make a conversation in english i am ready lots of people are very eager these days to learn english english is a growing language growing all the time Layla Layla Rudani says yes Mr Duncan more than once I have googled myself I don't think there's anything wrong with googling yourself if you want to see what the internet has about you or about me <laughs> I think it's fair I think it's okay to look onto the onto the internet and have a little peep have a little look to find out what the internet has stored about you why not mr duncan <laughs> i need to learn too much or very much maybe very much is a better way of expressing that estella says i googled myself on facebook to see how many people with my name there were ah that's very good it's amazing if you go onto the internet and certainly if you think you have an unusual name maybe you think your name is very unusual you might be surprised to find that there are many people in the world who share your name so yes i think that's quite an interesting point to make thank you estella estella villoria who apparently has googled herself there is some big news coming today uh, just in case you are a viewer of one particular tv program doctor who do you ever watch doctor who doctor who is a british tv show and today they will be announcing the producers of the program are going to announce the new doctor who <laughs> have you ever watched doctor who it's a very popular program doctor who started in 1963 and it's still running now 54 years later so 54 years doctor who has been running with a slight break of course because at the end of the 1980s uh, they stopped making the program and then they started making it again in the late 1990s if i remember rightly there was a feature film and then they started making the tv show again so today they will be announcing the new actor who will be playing doctor who and apparently lots of people think that the new doctor who will be a female a female doctor who for the first time ever <laughs> and lots of people have their own suggestions their own ideas who will be the new doctor who this will be the 13th actor the 13th actor to play doctor who apparently do you ever watch doctor who there are lots of interesting tv shows made here in britain there is doctor who for those who aren't sure and that is a dvd taken from one of the very first stories this particular story comes from 1964 so this is the very early days of doctor who do you ever watch it i don't watch it much nowadays i used to watch it when i was a child so i used to watch doctor who when i was very little and it used to scare me so much it was a really scary program so children 
of my age when I was about seven or eight I used to watch Doctor Who all the time even though it used to scare me so much I used to go behind the sofa I used to hide behind the sofa because I was so afraid there are of course lots of British TV shows around some of them I'm going to mention right now now I am a very big fan of satire I like satire satire means to make fun of something or to have or make jokes about a certain thing so these are two TV shows that I watched many years ago when they were on and these particular shows are satires of the news so these two programs satire the news they make fun they are sarcastic towards the way in which news is reported so those are two programs that i used to watch have you ever seen them are you familiar with these tv programs let's have a look at another one I'm sure many people will be familiar with this TV show, <laughs> The Office. Of course, originally a British program, but of course there was also a version made in the USA. So there are two versions of this TV program. The original version was made in Britain. It is a British TV program. And then later there was an American version a version made in the USA starring that guy the one with the beard Ricky Gervais can you see him there he is da, 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 da. Ricky Gervais is the star of The Office have you ever watched The Office it is a comedy show talking about and showing life in a typical British office another TV show now this is also satire Alan Partridge have you ever heard of Alan Partridge a very popular TV show in the 1990s it also was made into a movie as well so there it is I'm Alan Partridge have you ever seen it and of course we couldn't talk about British TV shows without mentioning this program. <laughs> of course, yes. Mind Your Language. Mind Your Language, a British TV show made in the 1970s and 1980s. And this TV program takes a humorous look at a group of students who are learning English as a second language. Many of my viewers, many of you have watched this now on YouTube. And this is a British TV program made many years ago in the late 1970s, believe it or not. But very popular, very popular now. Finally, <laughs> I don't know where to start explaining this here is a tv show that was made in the early 1980s and this covers something that is very hard to explain if you are not familiar with this type of performance now you could see <laughs> on the cover of this dvd there are two ladies two elderly ladies can you see them their names are Dame Hilda Brackett and Dr. Avadni Hinge. They are known as Hinge and Brackett, and they were very, very popular during the 1970s and 1980s. They appeared a lot on British television. Now, the thing to note about these two ladies is that they are not actually ladies, they are actually men pretending to be ladies something that is very unique to British humor so when we talk about British humor quite often more often than not it involves men dressing up as ladies and pretending to be ladies so there it is 
<laughs> a TV show that I used to watch and I still do in fact it's very funny very humorous and very entertaining as well dear ladies is something I used to watch starring hinge and bracket when a man dresses up as a woman for entertainment we call it drag drag so when you do a drag performance you are a man dressing up as a woman and performing as a woman this is very unique to british humor when you think of british humor you always think of men dressed as women so there we go <laughs> plenty to keep you occupied on a sunday afternoon i think back to the live chat now <laughs> men dressed as women <gasps> oh dear me i'm sure i'll get complaints about that mr duncan please send a special big hello to meraba Layla says can you send a big special hello meraba mr duncan uh, meraba mr duncan indeed hi mr duncan i like watching skins oh yes that's a very popular tv show i don't think it's made anymore but it did have quite a few quite a few seasons i think four or five seasons skins talking and uh, looking at the the way that teenagers live their lives yes i think so yes very good skins thank you G jean santos for your message i have watched sherlock holmes says eliana yes sherlock holmes made into more than one tv program there have been many versions of sherlock holmes made over the years including many movies and also on television um sherlock holmes has been portrayed one of my favorite actors to play Sherlock Holmes is a man called Jeremy Brett during the 1980s he played Sherlock Holmes on television in the UK and he was brilliant I think he was the best actor ever the best portrayal ever of Sherlock Holmes was by an actor called Jeremy Brett many years ago Mr Duncan i like the nice smile on your chest oh there it is yes my little smiley face saying hello to you all because it's a sunday and it's live english for those who want to get in touch with me or if you want to follow me on facebook here are the details there it is live english for a sunday and we are now live across the world wide web we've just nine minutes away from three o'clock i am with you until four o'clock uk time and don't forget you can catch me every single sunday i am here every sunday from 2 p.m uk time lots of people on the live chat i like to say hello to my live chatters even though some people think it's a waste of time but it isn't because my viewers that is you you are the most important thing to me so i like saying hello to you j pierre says what about monty python <gasps> yeah monty python absolutely brilliant from the 1970s and early 1980s yes monty python they were on television and of course they made a few movies as well including monty python and the holy grail monty python's the life of brian very controversial because it deals with religion and of course as i said they appeared on television here in the uk during the 1970s their style of humor is very surreal 
it's very unusual very odd have you ever seen a movie called alfie with an actor called jude law asks pedro yes the original version of that particular movie starred michael caine so actually alfie with jude law was actually a remake of the original movie which starred michael caine hello my name's michael caine <laughs> do you know who michael caine is a very famous actor yulia says hello mr duncan i am from ukraine i am very glad to be here well i'm glad you are here as well because without you i would be talking to nobody and that's very strange let's have a look now at one of my full english lessons and then after three o'clock we are going to go onto google i am going to google myself <laughs> it sounds very rude doesn't it so i will be googling myself live on youtube in around about seven or eight minutes time but right now we are going to have a look at an excerpt from one of my full english lessons sometimes after eating a meal you might find that your stomach starts to feel uncomfortable. You might feel pain or get an ache. Perhaps the food you ate does not agree with you. This phrase expresses the fact that perhaps you are sensitive to certain types of food. I rarely eat spicy food as it does not agree with me. I never eat onions as they don't agree with me in other words that particular type of food will upset your stomach if you eat it an upset stomach is a bad stomach which can lead to you spending a long time on the toilet here's a funny word can you see it? It looks like the word fishing, but spelt differently. What the heck is that all about? Well, I will tell you. This word is indeed pronounced as fishing. But as you can see, it is spelt with a PH at the beginning. This particular fishing means to attempt to obtain someone's personal details, such as their address or bank details by pretending to represent a large well-known company. This is normally done in the form of an email. For example, you might receive an email from someone saying that they are from a big bank. They tell you that your account has been changed, so you must send them your personal details, such as your credit card details or password, so the account can be reset. Of course, the person writing is not from the bank. They are just trying to get your personal details. They are phishing. They are trying to get your personal information from you through deception. The person doing the deceiving is called a fisher. So, the next time you receive an email from someone saying that they are from your bank, or a large company, or the orphan of a millionaire, be very careful as there is a chance that someone is fishing for your personal details and your money I love idioms, don't you? There are many expressions around that relate to our own existence. There can be no doubt that life has its ups and downs. There are sunny days and dark days, happy times and sad times. We must take the rough with 
the smooth. There will always be unexpected things that come along to try and throw us off the path to happiness. But we must take it on the chin. We have to grin and bear it. We must put on a brave face. Good fortune can be described as an upturn. When things start to get better, we can say that there is light on the horizon. A glimmer of hope means that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Things are getting better. As I said many years ago in one of my earlier lessons, without sadness, we would never really know what it is like to be truly happy. It's time to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a phrase or sentence that is used a lot during a certain period of time. Today's buzzword is the sentence, lessons must be learnt. This phrase seems to be used a lot these days. It is normally spoken after a terrible event has taken place, when more could have been done to prevent or ease the effect of something bad occurring. We often state that there are lessons to be learnt. We normally hear those who are in charge or who have authority saying this. Some might say that by using this sentence, a person is admitting guilt or is taking the blame for something without facing the consequences. If not enough was done to prevent a bad or tragic thing happening, we will often state that there are lessons to be learnt or lessons must be learnt. Ten ways to say one thing in English. In English, there are many ways to say one thing. A sentence can consist of many different words to express what is, in essence, exactly the same. It is possible to use different words to say the same thing. There are various ways of expressing one thing. There is more than one way to say one thing. To say one thing in English can be done by using many different combinations of words. The words are different, however, the meaning remains the same. You don't have to use the same words all the time to state one particular thing. Syntax does not confine those who know how to use it. A thousand words can say one thing, but not always together. Do you know someone who is a nosy parker? Perhaps you yourself can sometimes be a little nosy. A nosy person is someone who is interested in other people's personal affairs. You are over inquisitive and feel the need to delve into others' lives. Perhaps you like watching what your neighbours are up to. A nosy person might be described as having been prying, spying or snooping on others. To pry or snoop is to be nosy. For some reason we seem very interested in the lives of those in the public eye. The lives of the rich and famous seem so glamorous and perfect, so the possibility of finding out what really goes on in their day-to-day -day lives is very seductive. With the wide range of glossy magazines and reality TV shows now available to view, featuring celebrities of all shapes and sizes, many of us have, without realising it, become nosy parkers. The phrase nosy parker was first used on a postcard that depicted a person spying on people from behind a bush.
so there it was an excerpt from one of my full english lessons that was in fact full english number 11 that wasn't the whole lesson that was just part of it just an excerpt from that particular episode and of course don't forget all of my lessons are available on my playlists the playlists for all of my English lessons are under this video everything that I've made all of my English lessons are under this video the playlists are down there <laughs> I hope that's clear Mr. Duncan, you forgot to reveal today's mystery idioms. Oh, OK, let's do that now, then, shall we? Because we are now coming up to five minutes past three, another 55 minutes to go. And we are now going to reveal today's mystery idioms. If you think you know what they are, let me know. It is something for you to scratch your head with today so here we go two well-known english phrases they are in picture form all you have to do is guess what the phrases are here is the first one today's first mystery idiom but what is it what is the mystery idiom do you have any idea it is a common english phrase something used in english but what is it and here is the second mystery idiom there are two for you to guess and here is the second one i think this one is very easy i think this one is easy just say what you see say what you see so there is the first one a well-known idiom a phrase used in english and the, here is the second one. I think this one is very easy. In fact, I think they are both quite easy. If you think you know what they are, if you think you have an idea what they are, please let me know and I will reveal the answers towards the end of today's live stream. A mystery idioms. A lot of people seem to like the mystery idioms. Now, I'm often asked to show them. Can I just apologise once again for not showing up last week? I had some things that occurred that I had to deal with last week, some things that I had to sort out last week, so I do apologise for that. We were talking about TV programmes because today they are going to reveal the new Doctor Who. Who will be the new Doctor Who? And an even bigger question, will it be a lady? Ooh, a lady time lord so a lot of people seem to think that the new doctor who will be a woman so we will wait and see because today it is going to be announced right after the final of wimbledon because the men are playing today in the final and right after that we will find out who will be the new doctor who <gasps> wow Unless, of course, you never watch Doctor Who, in which case that means nothing to you whatsoever. We were talking about British TV shows. Estella says, Mr. Duncan, I saw Doctor House. Is that a British program? No, it is not. It is actually made in the US. It was. It is finished now. Uh, Doctor House. But of course, it did star a British actor pretending to be American it's very confusing I know so Doctor House was a was a, a US TV show but it starred a British actor playing an American doctor so yes I think I understand that I don't understand the word Google can you explain it well Google is the name of the search engine on the internet so when you Google something, it means you search for something on the Internet. So Google is the name of the company that owns the search engine and, of course, YouTube as well. So the very thing you are watching now is owned by Google. 
and of course google can also be a verb so you can google something which is what i'm going to do right now i have my mobile phone here my little smartphone so let's have a look shall we let's google mr duncan and see what happens <laughs> few people are asking about the tennis i think it's roger fedra playing in the final today a lot of people seem to think that fedra will win today i've got an email here is this anything to do with today's program let's have a look abdu omer has sent me an email just before we go to google thank you abdu for that abdu omer has sent me a photograph eventually it will open <laughs> oh i see abdu has sent a picture of a cup of tea and he says mr duncan you are my cup of tea oh there it is just to show there it is thank you very much <laughs> okay it's time to google myself now so here it is there is google there is the search engine of course it is available on most mobile devices and computers so now i am going to enter my name i'm going to put mr duncan into google and see what happens <laughs> isn't this exciting i'm going to cheat here because i'm going to say my name so i'm not going to type it i'm going to say it mr duncan here is a matching video oh okay then that was quick very polite isn't google polite <laughs> so google has come up with well first of all google has sent me that as the search for the search for mr duncan on google so there it is that is the top search for me uh, on google and of course it is my first ever english lesson lesson one which has over 11 million views now so that's what happens when you go onto google let's have a look what else comes up we have lots of my video lessons including my first ever full english lesson there it is can you see it my first full english lesson let's have a look what else comes up many of my english lessons come up let's have a look at photographs now let's have a look what photographs come up when we search for mr duncan oh okay then there it is you can see some of the search results there i don't think all of these people are me <laughs> most of those photographs are me but for some reason david cameron who used to be the prime minister of this country apparently david cameron also comes up on the search for mr duncan i don't know why <laughs> and as you can see lots of photographs from my lessons let's go further down some more lots of photographs taken from my lessons you can see now quite clearly that there are lots of english lessons on the internet made by me here are some more <laughs> i hope there aren't any rude pictures here <laughs> i'm taking a big risk here so there are quite a few photographs the interesting thing about these pictures is that many of them are not actually posted by me many of these photographs are actually posted by other people and that includes people who steal my video lessons so there are people on youtube who actually steal my lessons and then re-upload them pretending to be me which isn't very good really i don't like that at all so that's what happens when you search for yourself on youtube 
or should I say on Google? <laughs> sometimes it's very confusing because Google owns YouTube. So sometimes you can get a little bit confused. So have you ever Googled yourself? Have you ever looked for yourself on Google? And did you find anything interesting when you went on there? Another question today. Do you know any British TV shows? Are there any British TV programs that you have watched in the past? Are there any? And if you have watched them, what were they? It's a Sunday afternoon. It's Mr. Duncan live on YouTube. It is live English on a Sunday, live to the world on YouTube. Thank you to Jean Santos, who says I was watching Skins and I didn't like it. A TV show all about the lives of teenagers. Juan Carlos says, Mr. Duncan, I like the series The Office. Very good recommendation. The Office, a very popular TV show made many years ago. I think it was made in 2000, 2001. And there I have the DVD. This actually is the box set. So this particular box set has all of the episodes of The Office. And of course, later it was made into a TV show in the States as well. So it has been made in the UK and also in the United States as well. Some other programs that I showed you earlier, including this, Dear Ladies. This is one of my all time favorite TV programs. It is a program, a comedy program. So it is funny about two elderly ladies who live in an English village. But the strange thing is, the unusual thing is that they are both played by men. And the lady or should I say gentleman on the left actually lived. He used to live in the place where I was born, the same town, Stafford. So there they are, hinge and bracket. <laughs> Dear ladies, can I just say now this is one of my all time favorite TV programs. Sometimes British humor can seem very unusual to other people around the world. And one of the things that British humour involves is men pretending to be ladies. Right now, there is a TV show on the BBC called Mrs Brown's Boys. And Mrs Brown is an elderly Irish lady who is a man. It's actually a man pretending to be a woman. So this is something that does occur quite often in British humour, British humour. Some people find British humour very odd, very unusual. Maybe you do. Mr Duncan, I've watched every episode of Mind Your Language. Mind Your Language. I have watched every episode. Have you ever seen the fourth season? Now, there were three seasons made of Mind Your Language. And then later on, there was a fourth season. But the fourth season has vanished. It has disappeared. No one knows where it is. So on the DVD, there are three seasons, but the fourth one has vanished. It was made, I think it was made in 1986, but no one knows where that particular season is. It vanished without trace. 
Estella said, yes, I've watched Mind Your Language. Do you feel like Mr. Brown at times? Mr. Brown was the teacher in Mind Your Language. Yes, I suppose I, I may have been influenced by Mr. Brown because I used to watch Mind Your Language when I was very young. So perhaps Mind Your Language has influenced me just a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Mr. Duncan, I like to watch Sherlock Holmes with Benedict Cumberbatch. Hello, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. Jamelia says, I love British sitcoms. Sitcom. Shall I write that down for you? I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper and then show it to you because that's why I am here. <laughs> sitcom. Sitcom. We often use this in British English to mean a comedy program. Sitcom. Sitcom means situation comedy so comedy that involves everyday situations and that's why we call it sitcom sitcom so mind your language is a british sitcom jamelia says i love british sitcoms such as monty python my family oh yes my family have you ever seen that that was made many years ago it used to be one of the most popular tv shows on bbc many many years ago also gavin and stacy which stars james corden i don't like james corden i don't like james corden i, I can't stand him really can't <laughs> no 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 james corden please no <laughs> mika ode is here hello mika thanks for joining me today i've watched one of the british programs unfortunately i can't recall its title but i know the man's name it's gareth malone and he made people sing for the competition I think that might be something called the choir. I think it was called the choir. I might be wrong. Faisal is here. Hello, Faisal. Thanks for joining me. Lots of people on the live chat today. Lots of people to say hello to, even though some people don't like it when I say hello to my viewers. They get very annoyed. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, I googled my brother's name and the first result of googling his name was his facebook account oh well maybe perhaps there aren't many people who share your brother's name just a suggestion that's all sammy sammy cage says hello mr duncan from patrice near aix en provence in france hello to you i used to watch colombo <gasps> yeah although colombo wasn't made in britain it was actually made in the united states but i love colombo i really do ah uh, my wife my wife is a big fan of yours i gotta say mr duncan my wife my wife is a big fan of yours ah oh, there's just one more thing if you watch colombo you will know that 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 was a very bad impression of Columbo. I apologize for that. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, can you please enter this video online? I, I don't know what you mean by that. Do you mean the address of the video? Hi, Mr. Duncan. It's my first time here. Ricardo, Ricardo Almeida. Hello, Ricardo, and welcome to my live chat on a Sunday afternoon. I am live now on YouTube. It is 20 minutes past three o'clock. Don't forget, we have our mystery idioms for you to look at. There are today's mystery idioms. That is the first one. What is it? A well-known phrase in English. And there is the second one. I think this one is very easy. Who knows? It might not be. Maybe you find it very difficult. 
but to me it's easy <laughs> let's just say this particular idiom idiom is something you do very often so this idiom is something you do very often <laughs> and this one is something that can happen from time to time so there they are today's mystery idioms but the question is what do they mean what are they what are today's mystery idioms i have a new neighbor coming soon because the person living next door to me is selling their house at the moment so i think in the near future i am going to get a new neighbor will they be prepared to live next door to mr duncan i wonder <laughs> they will look out of their window and they will see me standing in my garden talking to myself into a camera they will probably think what have i done this area is crazy it is my first time here in your channel i really like this very useful thank you gene santos once again for saying hello very kind of you to join in gavin yang says my favorite tv show is the it crowd the it crowd yeah i like that one as well it is a situation comedy set in a large company and the stories revolve around the people who work in the it department very funny yes the it crowd or the it crowd very nice yes that is a british tv show mr duncan i listen to everyone who speaks english clearly and slowly i understand what he says but if he speaks quickly i don't that is a common problem with those who are unfamiliar with different types of accent and different types of speed of speech so yes it is something that you generally get used to over time so at first it may seem very difficult but as time goes by as you become more familiar with english you will begin to hear you will begin to understand what people are saying even when they are talking quickly we have someone watching in italy hello a big hello to italy enna enna napolitano or napolitano enna napolitano did i pronounce that well i hope so i am watching you now from italy thanks a lot mr duncan i am now watching in pakistan i like this so much uma uma Farooq in pakistan my favorite tv show says hung is britain's got talent oh i see you like watching the talent shows some people say mr duncan you should go on british britain's got talent as a singer i don't know why i'm not very good at singing i'm not a singer mr duncan your neighbor is selling the house how much why are you thinking of buying it do you want to live next door to me <laughs> trust me you don't you don't want to live next door to me really nishant is here hello nishant thanks for joining me you are a little bit late today because we are only here for another half an hour brazil says hello thanks a lot brazil lots of people watching in brazil today earlier on i googled myself have you ever googled yourself have you ever put your name or the place that you live in have you ever entered it into the google search engine of course google is the company that owns the largest search engine in the world it's true and of course google also own youtube <laughs> which is where you are watching me now mr duncan is your speaking speed average in the uk it's pretty much average yes most people in their day-to-day -day lives will speak at this speed pretty much pretty much normally 
people will speak at a an average pace so nothing too quick nothing too slow because you want people to understand what you are saying of course maybe when you get excited if, a, if an English person gets excited maybe their speech will speed up maybe they will actually speak faster but for most of the time people speak at a at an average pace a bit like me really I googled my name and it shows 69,000 results says Marcio wow so there are lots of people with your name or you are very famous so it's one of those <laughs> Olga says Mr Duncan your mystery idioms is the first one bind the hand and the foot and is the second one penny from heaven let's have a look shall we no you are wrong with both of them at the moment so there they are today's mystery idioms there is the first one and there is the second one i thought this one was quite easy just say what you see I will give you the answers to the mystery idioms later on. Ray Kakuna asks, Mr. Duncan, do you like the British sitcom Black Adder? Yes, I do. I really do. Now, that particular program was made way back in the 1980s. A very old TV show, Black Adder, starring Rowan Atkinson. So, Rowan Atkinson also played mr bean hello my name is mr bean <laughs> we are getting some guesses now coming through on the mystery idiom thank you very much for that lonar thank you very much for your guess hung din says pronounced by english english or english america which is easier I don't know really what you mean there. I'm not sure what your question is. Are you saying is it easy? Is it easier to pronounce things with British English or is it easier to pronounce things with American English? It really depends. It really depends. There aren't any rules. There aren't any laws that say you must speak one type of English. So some people prefer American English whilst others prefer British English. But really I think they are both is difficult because you have to learn them. So anything you have to learn is difficult at the beginning. Interesting coincidence, Mr. Duncan. I've watched Bladadder. <laughs> Bladadder. <laughs> Not Bladadder. Blackadder. <laughs> I've watched Blackadder for the first time one week ago. Oh, Olga, what a coincidence how strange david zapata says have you ever watched dragon's den oh yes that's a very interesting tv show that is where people try to put their ideas forward to a panel of business people so maybe there are people in the panel who can offer money to help this particular person start their business or to produce the product that they have invented yes i think so dragon's den a very interesting tv show hello mr duncan is the first one tied tie the knot or one tied knot and the second one is one side of the coin thank you nishant let's have a look they are not the ones that you said no so there is the second one and there is the first one but what are they they are today's mystery idioms but what are they
live English on a Sunday afternoon as live as live can be I hope you are well today I hope you are super duper feeling happy for those who have just joined me I am now live on YouTube and you can catch me live every Sunday from two o'clock UK time I'm planning to go to England with my wife maybe you can suggest some nice place to meet thank you mr duncan thank you shearer blade when are you coming here when are you coming to the uk elania or alina alina bendetti says i saw mr ben here in brazil on a theater watching roberto carlos a brazilian singer mr ben i don't know who mr ben is there was a cartoon in the 1970s called mr ben <laughs> and that was a a man who used to go into a clothes shop and he used to put a uniform on and then he would go out and have an adventure mr ben <laughs> i'm sure there are episodes of that on youtube i'm pretty sure of it and it was a kids tv show so it was aimed at children hello mr duncan hi i hear that we can use i i with were in wish sentences i don't know what that means i i hear that we can use i with were i'm not sure what you mean by that do you like Mr. Bean the movie? I like the first one. I like the first Mr. Bean movie, but I didn't like the second one when he goes on holiday. I didn't like that one. I didn't think it was as funny, but I did like the first one. The first one was very funny when he was he was having to take the painting to I think he was taking it to to France or somewhere. So the first one was better. Mr. Bean the movie was better, but I didn't like the second one. I didn't think it was as funny. Mr. Duncan, hello from Kazakhstan. Straight away on the live chat, popped up right in front of my eyes. <laughs> Nick Zivy says hello. Thank you very much for joining me today. You are very, very kind. I'm going to show you an excerpt from one of my full English lessons now. This is taken from full English number 19, looking at many many different subjects here's a good example of an english word that is often used incorrectly the word paraphrase is one that is often misused it is on occasion placed within a sentence by mistake to paraphrase something means to change the wording of a sentence so as to make it clearer to emphasize the meaning of something might require you to paraphrase you reword a sentence so as to make it appear more clear teachers often paraphrase sentences so as to allow their students to recognize the important points of a subject to express something in as clear a way as possible might require some paraphrasing to take place even here in my English lessons I often paraphrase so as to ensure that my explanations come across as clearly as they can many people believe that to paraphrase is to shorten a sentence this is not true to emphasize and clarify a sentence is to paraphrase the word originates from the Greek word para which means modification and phrasen, which means tell. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm moving these empty plastic bottles to the recycling box at the back of my house. They will then be collected by the local recycling plant and taken to a place where they will be melted down 
and reused. To recycle is the process of reusing something over and over. These days recycling is carried out all around the world. Almost anything can be recycled. The most commonly recycled materials include water, paper and plastic. Many electrical devices can now be recycled too. Most metallic objects are also recyclable from discarded cans right up to disused cars. Many things these days can be recycled. We often hear the word sustainable used when discussing recycling. This word refers to the action of maintaining a balance between the use and replacement of materials needed for the manufacturing of everyday items. Sustainable forests and sustainable oceans being the two most common places where things such as wood, gas and oil are found. It's time to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a word or phrase that is used during a certain period or is generally popular. Today's buzzword is prank. The word prank can be used as both a noun and verb. A practical joke or trick played on someone is a prank. To do something mischievous to someone so as to get a reaction from them is prank. You play a prank on someone or you prank someone. You create a fictitious or fake situation for someone to deal with, such as an angry phone call. This is a prank. Another example is you might arrange for a friend to be arrested by someone pretending to be a police officer. To make someone believe that something bad is happening when it isn't is to prank someone. The prank is the trick or joke. To prank someone is the action of playing a prank. Pranks are quite amusing for those watching from afar, but not so for the victim of the prank. We can use the phrase hoax to mean prank. You hoax someone. It's a hoax. Believe it or not, the word prank has been in use for over 400 years. How are you enjoying today's full English? Is it OK? I hope so. They say that English can be a confusing language to learn with many clauses and rules to remember. A good example being the differences between the words less and fewer. In standard English, you should only use fewer with things that are countable and less with things that are uncountable. In their general use, the words less and fewer refer to having a smaller amount or not so much of something. So less is used with uncountable things. Less sugar, less water, less light, less money, less time. Whereas fewer is used with countable things. Fewer cats, fewer people, fewer words, fewer days. We often use less and less in a sentence to show a decrease or steady fall. It is worth remembering that when numbers are being discussed, the word less is used to show that one number is smaller than the other. Less than three, less than ten, the confusion between less and few is a common one, even among native English speakers. <laughs> oh, I'm just doing my neck exercises. This is something I like to do from time to time to to get my neck to to stay supple so I can I can move around easily because sometimes especially when I wake up in the morning I get I get neck ache I get an ache in my neck 
so that's what I'm doing I'm just doing my neck exercises and that was a full English episode that was full English number 19 don't forget you can find all of my lessons on my YouTube channel my playlists are all underneath this video everything that I've made all of my playlists are under this video don't forget also you can watch this later you can watch this whole live stream again as many times as you want and hopefully there will also be subtitles as well underneath later not now so if you are watching this live there are no subtitles but later hopefully there will yeah the big question today who will be the new doctor who do you watch doctor who have you ever watched it doctor who a very popular tv show made here in the uk and today they are going to reveal the new doctor who because the current actor is leaving the show so there will be a new doctor who but who will it be we are the daleks we will exterminate mr duncan <laughs> sorry about that there, there is a dvd of one of the very early doctor who episodes this particular one in my hand was made in 1964 so this episode of doctor who is older than me I know there aren't many things that are older than Mr. Duncan, but this is older than me. This episode of Doctor Who. Today we are going to find out who the new actor will be. The new actor playing Doctor Who. In fact, they are supposed to be revealing it around about now. So I will have a look now just to see have they named the new Doctor Who yet? <laughs> no not yet we are still waiting i have a feeling that my live stream will be finished before they announce who the new doctor who will be at the moment the bbc is showing tennis live tennis from wimbledon and then afterwards they are going to tell everyone who the new doctor who will be do you watch it do you watch Doctor Who? I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid and it used to scare me so much. It really did put the willies up me. It did. Definitely. So, who will the new Doctor Who be? And still, they are not telling us. They really want to keep us in suspense. I think so. I will check back to see if they have announced the new doctor who but they haven't at the moment please give some examples of until and till well to be honest until and till mean the same thing so when we say until tomorrow or till tomorrow so till is an abbreviation of until hi mr duncan i'm planning my next vacation in 2018 and until then i am saving my money i would like to know a nice place to visit there are so many nice places to visit here in the uk lots of lovely places you can go to the south of england you can go along the coast you can travel around the uk you might even want to visit me well not me personally but maybe you can come to shropshire and have a look around because lots of beautiful views exist here in Shropshire as we saw earlier so there is the video that I showed at the start of today's live stream so perhaps you can come and visit the Long Mind maybe a very beautiful place not very far away from where I live and we went there the other week because Mr Steve's mum was here Mr. Steve's mother stayed here a few days ago <laughs> and we went for a lovely walk across the hills of Shropshire. <laughs>
very nice so shira blade i hope you you managed to save enough money to come to the uk because there are lots of places lots of wonderful places to visit mr duncan what is the name of the song you use in your full english lessons i've searched google but i can't find it i find the music you use is very great the reason why you can't find the music is because it is not available commercially you have to buy it through a special company and of course you have to also buy a special license which allows you to use it so that particular type of music the music that i use in my lessons and in many of my videos i buy especially for my video lessons and also i have to pay some extra money as well so i can use the music i have to pay a license as well i have to pay for the license so i can use it let's have a look at a flash word shall we have a flash word or a flash phrase i don't really know let's go into the other room and find out Doobie -doobie -doo. If you just tuned in, it is a Sunday afternoon and it's Mr. Duncan live. Just another 10 minutes to go and then I will have to say goodbye. But for now, here we are with today's... Oh, it's a flash phrase, everyone. Yeah, a flash phrase. Today's flash phrase is, I hope you can see that, go to town. The flash phrase is go to town. The phrase go to town is an English expression. The phrase go to town is an English expression that means to put a lot of effort and work into something. To do something with wild exuberance is to go to town. Exuberance. I love that word. Exuberance. Ooh. <laughs> to do something enthusiastically and with lots of extravagance is to go to town i really want to go to town with my next project they really went to town with the wedding banquet this year i want to go to town with my christmas light display to be extravagant enthusiastic passionate when doing something is to go to town so there it is go to town is today's flash phrase live on youtube i will be going soon thanks a lot for your company today but now i must go back into the studio because we are going hopefully to find out who the new doctor who will be isn't it exciting will be the new doctor who <laughs> who who will be the new doctor who i don't know i've no idea have they announced it yet is there a new doctor who no they still haven't announced it <laughs> oh dear me it's like waiting for paint to dry isn't it so it looks like Roger Federer has won Wimbledon again. But now the question everyone is asking, who will be the new Doctor Who? Are we going to find out? <laughs> I'm sorry if you're uh, if you're getting bored there and you don't watch Doctor Who. OK, we'll talk about something else, shall we?
I wish I could learn English directly with you through Skype, says Hung Din. I'm very sorry about that. I don't do Skype lessons. That's the reason why I do this, because I want everyone to have a chance to learn English with me. And of course, if I did one to one teaching, you would have to pay for it as well. But of course, all of this is free. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Mr. Duncan, <laughs> Mr. Duncan will be the new Doctor Who. I don't think so. I don't even have a sonic screwdriver or a TARDIS. I don't have either of those things. So, no, I, I don't think I'm going to be the new Doctor Who somehow. A lot of people seem to think the new Doctor Who will be a lady, a female Doctor Who, or maybe maybe not who knows mr duncan what is the name of the song oh i've read that one already i'm sorry i'm reading all the messages again mr duncan do you really have snakes in your garden not here no not around here there are snakes that exist in the uk but most of them are not poisonous but they are quite scary I am a new subscriber. You are great. And I am from Nepal and I have a grandpa in the US. He lives in Portland. Very nice place, Portland. Very nice. Good choice. Thank you, Rich, Rich Cannot Kangzo for that. Thank you very much. Mr. Duncan, what does the word crash room crash room? I'm not sure. I've never heard of crash room. It sounds sounds very interesting. It sounds like a room where people crash into each other. I'm not sure. Crash room. I've heard of classroom, but I've never heard of crash room. Pierre is going. Oh, Pierre. Catch you later, Pierre. A big ta-ta from Pierre and Irene. And of course, Birkhoff the dog and four hens as well in France thank you very much for that I am going in a moment but before I leave you let's have a look at today's flash not flash they are today's mystery idioms <laughs> I'm just getting so excited because because they're going to announce the new Doctor Who I can hardly contain myself. So here we go. Today's mystery idioms. I am now going to give you the answers. So the first one. It looks very interesting, but what is it? What is. The flash. Mystery idiom. <laughs> to get caught in red tape is. The first mystery idiom to get caught in red tape. The meaning is to be prevented from doing something due to complex rules and regulations. So to get caught in red tape means to be prevented from doing something due to complex rules and regulations. And it does happen a lot. And the second mystery idiom. What is the second mystery idiom? I hear you ask. I said that it's something that we do quite often. Something that we all do often. <laughs> sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times, sometimes 20 times a day. <laughs> the second mystery idiom is spend a penny yes spend a penny that is today's second mystery idiom and the meaning is to urinate or go to the toilet for a pee pee or a wee wee is to spend a penny so we can use it as an idiom for going for a wee wee you can spend a penny I must go. I, I need to spend a penny. <laughs> so
so there they were today's mystery idioms but the big question is who is the new doctor who do we have it do we have a new doctor who please someone tell us <laughs> no still not uh, this is unfair this is very unfair we're just coming up to four o'clock and they really are keeping us in suspense they are not telling us who the new doctor who is it's very annoying <laughs> oh come on bbc stop it stop playing games with us please just tell us who the new doctor who is <laughs> so i can finish my live stream even people on Twitter are getting angry now. They're getting very angry. They are saying, come on, tell us who the new Doctor Who is. Stop keeping us in suspense. Just get on with it. Oh, dear. No, still nothing. People are starting to swear. They're starting to use bad language now on Twitter. And that's the reason why I'm not going to use a screenshot. So I'm not going to show you what people are saying now on Twitter because quite a few of them are, are swearing. They are saying, come on, tell us who the bleeping new Doctor Who is. Please tell us. Oh, dear me. They are really milking this, aren't they? They are really milking this. It's not fair. OK. Mr. Duncan, I don't know this idiom. Spend a penny. Well, now you do. If you spend a penny, it means you go for a wee wee. It means you go to the toilet. It is a nice, polite way of saying go to the toilet. How long will you be live? I am going in a moment. I normally go at four o'clock, but I'm waiting for a few more moments because I want to announce who the new doctor who is who will be the new doctor who i'm sure you can't wait to find out really <laughs> uh, i have never seen doctor who says julie come on they are really making it very difficult for us Still nothing, still no Doctor Who, still no results. They are really being very mean. So the Wimbledon final is over and Roger Federer has won. Are you surprised by that? Still nothing, still nothing absolutely nothing i have a feeling that twitter has broken because now twitter isn't even updating there aren't any updates now coming through on twitter so i have the feeling i have a strange feeling that twitter has actually broken because of this i can't even get the latest updates now i don't know why <laughs> please someone tell me who the new doctor who is so i can go and spend a penny still they are keeping us waiting apparently owen wilson the famous actor american actor was at wimbledon today i'm sure you're pleased to hear that so who is the new doctor who come on stop messing around stop keeping us waiting <laughs> I'm sure the BBC is doing this on purpose. Dear Emmy, I don't know. So did you get the mystery idioms right? Did you get them right? Juan Francisco asks, hello, Mr. Duncan. I'd like to know why you decided to become an English teacher. That was many, many years ago. That was 14 years ago that I decided to become an English teacher. Something I was interested in doing whilst I was still young. Sometimes you have to do things when you are still young or else you'll never do them. 
and that's the reason why I decided to try teaching many years ago now over 14 years since I started teaching I can't believe it do you make your live videos every day asks Elgo I don't do this every day if you want me to do it every day I don't mind I can come here every day and say hello to you if you want as long as you watch of course <laughs> doppelganger says I think the new Doctor Who is Theresa May it might be I've always thought that Theresa May might be a time traveler oh you might have something there <sighs> have they told us yet who the new Doctor Who is this is very unfair they are really really making us suffer here <laughs> people on Twitter are getting very angry they are saying where is the new bleeping Doctor Who bleeping I say bleeping because I, I want to leave out the swear words are we going to find out who the new Doctor Who is maybe it's Daniel Craig that would be funny wouldn't it so instead of being James Bond Doc, uh, Daniel Craig could be the new Doctor Who ah nobody suggested that maybe I'm right Ooh. <sighs> it doesn't look as if we're going to find out who the new Doctor Who is before I finish no nobody is telling us they're keeping it a secret for as long as they can that's it I don't know about you but I can't wait any longer <laughs> Mr Duncan it's like waiting for the new Papa Papa Rimsky do you remember oh uh, there might be oh I see the new Pope yes it's a bit like waiting for the new Pope they have smoke that comes out of the chimney so if the smoke is white it means they haven't decided but if the smoke is black it means they have chosen the new Pope so at the moment we are waiting for the new Doctor Who but who will it be who will be the new Doctor Who I love your t-shirt Mr Duncan where did you get this I bought this t-shirt many years ago I've had this t-shirt for about 10 years and it still looks brand new Mr Duncan when are you normally live I am live every Sunday from 2 p.m. so you can catch me live on YouTube every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time that is when I am live on YouTube I am going in a minute thanks for your company today I will see you next Sunday and maybe I will do a live stream during the week as well maybe I will do a surprise live stream during the week what are the differences between clever smart and bright they can all mean the same thing so a person can be clever they can be bright and they can be smart it basically means the same thing a person who is very intelligent or has many abilities <laughs> we are going to look one more time to see who the new doctor who is come on have we found out yet no still not there are lots of people playing pranks now on Twitter they are all saying that the new Doctor Who are people who clearly will not be Doctor Who and that includes me I'm not going to be the new Doctor Who okay definitely not <sighs> this is very very hard to do isn't it I'm sure if you're watching this at the moment you are thinking Mr Duncan why are you talking about this most people don't even know who Doctor Who is <sighs> many people think that the new Doctor Who will be a woman I'm not sure I think it won't be I have a strange feeling that the new Doctor Who will not be a woman. Just a thought. 
just a thought julie g says goodbye mr duncan i hope jodie whittaker is the new doctor who that would be fantastic jodie whittaker i think she's a she's an actress isn't she a young actress i think judy dench would be a great doctor who dame judy dench should be the new doctor who yes definitely i think so she should mr duncan you should make a video about pronunciation i have made a video all about phonetics and how to pronounce english words i have done that and it is available on my youtube channel wow i'm really staying here for a long time today We are going to check one more time to see if they have announced who the new Doctor Who is. If they haven't, they still haven't. This is crazy. <laughs> I think the BBC is trolling us. They are trolling. I think the BBC are playing a big prank. That's what I'm starting to think now. oh dear me there are no live updates even there are no live updates they are still talking about tennis <laughs> some people are saying maybe roger federer is the new doctor who now that would be very interesting yes i think so So Roger Federer has won Wimbledon, but we still don't know who the new Doctor Who is. That's very, very, very disappointing. I'm going now. I think I think we've talked enough about who the new Doctor Who is because they're not going to tell us. Ahmed says, Mr. Duncan, do you like Top Gear? I don't like Top Gear. No, I, I'm not a fan of Top Gear. I'm not really interested in cars, to be honest. Mr. Steve likes Top Gear, but I don't. I'm not really interested shira blade says what about chris marshall maybe he could be the new doctor who chris marshall is a british actor he isn't very old but yes maybe who knows <laughs> this might be one of the strangest endings ever They are still talking about Wimbledon. They are still going on about Wimbledon. They are doing this on purpose. I think the BBC are trolling us all. I think they are actually playing a prank. They are playing a prank. They, they are keeping this going as long as they possibly can. That's it then. I gave them a chance. But they they decided to to talk about tennis. Rich kangzo says how to be lucky how to be lucky i don't know i don't know how to be lucky i'm still trying myself to be honest <laughs> maybe one day goodbye mr duncan have a nice week anna anna duart says goodbye i am going now it would appear that we are not going to find out who the new doctor who is and to be honest i i've lost complete interest now I've lost complete interest <laughs> because they they really are playing games. No, we are still waiting for the announcement. Well, I hope it's Dame Judy Dench. That's all I can say. I'm going now. I hope you've enjoyed today's live English. We have gone 14 minutes over what we normally do. I'm going. I will see you next Sunday thanks for taking part thanks for saying hello this is mr duncan in england saying thanks for following me today and i will see you next sunday at 2 p.m uk time and sadly we will not find out who the new doctor who is see you next sunday and of course you know what's coming next ta-ta for now